Do you hate doing the raid? Have you not even done the raid? Don't worry, because this build video is for you. Welcome to my first ever Marvel Avengers solo build for Iron Man. Before we begin, let me explain what a solo build is. Much like my prime builds, which you can see in the link in the description down below, these solo builds are built to be able to tackle pretty much anything that the game throws at you. But the key difference is here that these builds don't use any Omega level threat or raid gear whatsoever. So even if you don't play exclusive multiplayer content, you'll still be able to craft these builds. So let's go over the sections that we're going to cover in this video. Number one, stats, just how I've built my hero and why I focused on these stats. Number two, skills, what skills I've selected and why. Number three, champion points, what my focus around end game leveling is. Number four, gear, which gear perks I'm focusing on and why I'm focusing on them and where to farm them. And number five, showcase, how this build works in combat. Right, let's start with which stats I focus on. With an Iron Man ranged build or a build that uses his weapons in general, that's repulsors, lasers or missiles, you'll want to focus on precision as your main stat, as this will increase your damage output from those weapons. I also make sure to focus at least a little on proficiency, because that ensures I hit as many critical attacks as possible for the increased damage, but also as a lot of my perks work off of crits too, so it's important to have that in there. To build off of this, I focus quite heavily on Valor, as this not only increases the damage output of heroics, but also boosts crit damage, which is the best way to hit those really high damage numbers. Finally, I've made sure to have at least some resolve and resilience in this build, because quite frankly, without it, that armored suit has the durability of a wet paper bag. Now, let's move on to skills. Obviously, I have all of Iron Man's base skills unlocked, but let's go into the specifics, starting with the specialty tray. Under support heroic ability, I generally use Arc Supercharge, as this increases the duration of overcharge by 3 seconds. This helps to keep the damage buff up for longer and my intrinsic in its unlimited state too, which means I can use my weaponry for longer. But if you're struggling to stay alive as a solo player, you might want to use the one-way bubble perk Arc Field instead, and pair that with the defensive field on the second specialty choice here to reflect enemy projectiles instead of just stopping them. Now onto Assault Specializations, and the first is Precision Refractor, which extends the Unibeam by 3 seconds. This helps me maintain damage output for longer on bosses, as well as keeps me in the animation iframe longer, which makes me invincible for the duration that I have the button held down. Also, in case you didn't know, if you want to make your Unibeam last longer, just hold down the button longer. You'd be surprised how many people didn't actually know that. On top of that, for those of you who don't know, if you fire off the Unibeam with Precision Refractor enabled, it will actually increase your overcharge duration by 10 seconds, meaning you could stay overcharged for longer just by activating the Unibeam. Also, another reason I have the Unibeam extended is because of the second specialization that I use, which is Energy Condenser, which ensures that any enemy that is defeated by the Unibeam will drop a heroic orb. That way you can literally replenish your Unibeam almost instantly. This feeds into some of the other gear perks I use, but we'll get into that later. Now we move on to the ultimate specializations though, and the first is Disruption Pulse. This pulse outputs a staggering amount of stun damage when in the Hulkbuster, which is incredibly useful when fighting large groups of enemies. Speaking of keeping the Hulkbuster out for longer, I also use the Energy Star specialization, as this reduces the intrinsic energy that's used when performing actions in the armor. That way I can essentially increase its uptime by 25%. Now onto the mastery skill tree. This is where we can start to fine tune a lot of the stuff to really get the best out of this build. Firstly, I use combo finisher mastery. I don't tend to use combo finishers at all that much, but it's the best of the three available for my playstyle. Secondly, I have Heroic Takedown Mastery. I used to use the regen pack one, but the ability to generate heroic orbs adds more utility and can also help teammates that rely on heroics too. And the third one on the Combat Mastery tree is Ranged Combat Mastery that gives a flat 15% damage boost to all range attacks, which is the bread and butter of my build. Now onto the Ranged Mastery tree. On the first branch, I use Rocket Mastery, simply because a rocket can output the most amount of damage and also cause splash damage, which means you can hit a group of enemies at once or even weak points on bosses like the Warbot, which saves you a considerable amount of time. On the second branch, I continue with the Rocket Improvements and I use the Rocket Specialization to add a targeting system to rockets, which allows me to reduce the amount of attacks that I miss. This is super helpful in hectic fights. On the third and final branch, again more rocket improvements, this time using rocket efficiency to decrease the amount of intrinsic energy used when firing rockets by 10%, so I can use them for longer without having to switch up to melee or heroic attacks. Let's look at the intrinsic mastery tree now. In the first branch, I use arc reactor generator. Generally, this isn't needed as I'll usually use overcharge to fully replenish my intrinsic, but in the rare occasions that I don't have heroics, this really helps me to keep in the fight. 
In the second branch, I use overcharge duration, which only adds two seconds to my overcharge state, but despite the short addition, it really makes a big difference, as that's about two more seconds of unlimited weapon usage and continues to feed into the build in another way, which again, I'll talk about shortly. Lastly, in the third branch, I use overcharge damage boost, which gives me a nice 12.5% damage boost whilst overcharged, which is pretty much helpful considering you can proc it pretty easily by using your support heroic or by using your energy shield, which leads us to the final master tree, the utility tree. Firstly, to optimize the use of the shield, I use energy shield efficiency, which reduces the intrinsic cost of activating it, which means you're not burning intrinsic as you want to regen it and not deplete it, which is exactly why I use empowering barrier to regen 5% of my intrinsic every second when near the barrier. The cool thing about this is it doesn't just regen your intrinsic, but any teammates near it and they stack too. So if you have a team of four iron men, then you can get up to 20% regen per second. And the final skill selection is a pretty easy one. I use Afterburner as the latest update has increased traversal speeds exponentially, and I love how fast Iron Man can zip around the map now. It's an absolute godsend when farming missions and chests. Now, usually at this point in my builds, I'd share how I allocate my champion points, but since I ended up doing this in every single build video, I've gone ahead and made another video dedicated just to that, since in most of my build videos, I use the exact same selections. So if you want to check that out, this is what it looks like, and the link is in the description down below. Which now leads us into gear. Since this build isn't going to be showcasing the best gear that I have available, mainly because some of the best in the game is actually locked behind multiplayer activities, I may show you a couple of options per gear slot. Which one you go for won't really matter, but I will be highlighting which gear perks are the most important ones. But regardless of which gear piece you end up with, as long as you still have the highlighted perks, you'll still have a solid build. Also, as we go through gear, you may see some dates on screen. These dates reference offline dates that you can use to be able to get this gear without having to wait for the right date or cross your fingers for RNG. If you want to learn how to use offline dates, make sure to check out this video and you can find the link to that in the description down below. Right, on to slot one. This is the first piece that I've decided to go for and its stat roll is pretty decent with precision, proficiency and resolve. And although I would have liked for this to roll with valor instead of resolve, the perks make it too good to give up. The first being Faultless Spark, which gives you a 20% chance of receiving a heroic charge burst when hitting a melee critical attack, which the second perk helps out with since it applies the shock status effect when executing signature attacks. Which if you didn't know, once the shock status is applied to an enemy, it increases your chances of being able to hit crits. So if you're stuck without heroics, all you need to do is spam Iron Man's dive bomb attack, which is very hard for enemies to hit you if you do it correctly, and you can replenish your heroic meter very quickly. Even though these two perks are absolutely fantastic, it's not the focus for this gear piece. The main perk that we're looking for is Rampant Assistance. What this perk does is increases your heroic charge rate whilst overcharged, and whilst it reads that it increases it by 2.2%, in fact increases it by something more like 300%. Basically what this perk allows you to do is use your support heroic to instantly overcharge yourself and then use the uni beam to defeat a minimum of two enemies, which if you have the skill set as I've shown you in this video, you'll get at least two heroic orbs. Pick these up and you'll have all of your heroics back despite only just using them. Literally doesn't take anything more than that, which means you can constantly recharge your own heroics within seconds and your intrinsic too, meaning you are your own self-sustaining heroic battery. If you're really hurting for Valor though, here's another piece that I use that's rolled with just Valor and Precision. The first perk, Heavyweight Spark, isn't the best, but at least you do have a way of getting a heroic charge burst, and Gamma Signature attacks are pretty useful, albeit more in the raid. Again, it rolls with Rampant Assistance, so a pretty solid piece all around. Unfortunately, these pieces are not targeted, so you will have to just keep opening chests and hope that you are blessed by RNG Jesus. But if you're willing to use the offline dates method, you can use the dates that were shown on screen to be able to circumvent that RNG. Again, the links for that in the description down below. Moving on to slot two now, and I have a couple of options to show you. Both have their own merits, although one is much easier to get hold of than the other. Let's start with the hardest one first, that being the Repulsors of the Storm. Before we begin, it's probably worth telling you that this piece is only obtainable by either completing the Beating the Odds Villain Sector or the Tachyon Anomaly event, which has objectives that are unfortunately multiplayer only. Now I know I said this build was a solo build, and technically it is since you can get this from the Villain Sector, but honestly the RNG is so heavy that the only feasible way of getting this is realistically running the event. That said, I did want to mention it as it's incredibly OP. The reason it's so powerful is not just the high precision and valor roll, the perks are insane too. 
The first perk targets invulnerability gives you almost a 20% chance that any ranged critical attack will give you the invulnerability buff that nullifies all incoming damage and stagger. Some people try to roll this with targeted buff or targeted spark, which are both great options, but since it was hard enough to get this one to roll, this is what I've stuck with. The second perk, Cosmic Rocket, applies cosmic damage to any rocket attack that I use, which is my main attack when using Iron Man. This is especially good since Cosmic is a positive status effect, and if you selected the perks I mentioned earlier in the build, your support heroic, which will overcharge you, will also apply the shock status effect to nearby enemies which means if you then hit them with the cosmic rockets, you can take advantage of the battery effect and significantly boost your damage output. Lastly, targeted tachyon surge gives you an additional 50% boost to your status attack damage and meter buildup, which is also incredibly powerful. As mentioned though, that piece is incredibly hard to come by. So if you're not able to access any multiplayer activities and therefore not able to complete the event, or you simply don't want to run the beating the odd mission that many times, here's another piece that you might enjoy. This is the targeted Spark Ray. Whilst this rolled quite nicely with Precision, Resolve and Valor, it still has a couple of issues, but the main perk we want to see on this piece is targeted Spark. This perk gives you a chance to receive a heroic charge burst with every ranged critical attack. The idea is here that in combination with the first slot's perk, Rampant Assistance, you can fire off your support heroic, which will overcharge you, then use your ranged attack to provide a heroic charge burst, which when coupled with the first perk, will almost instantly charge your heroics, allowing you to maintain an infinite cycle of heroics and intrinsic energy. So literally all you need in this slot is that first perk. On this piece, I would have preferred to have rolled a positive status on the rockets, but again, having any status on your main attack will be better than none. Sadly, I don't have a date for this piece, but targeted spark shows up in chests and the stores relatively often, so make sure you check each of them each day so you don't miss out. Moving on to slot 3 now, and this is not just my solo build recommendation for this slot, this is actually the one I use in my prime build as well. With a healthy Valor Resolve and Precision roll, this piece really brings up my stats to where I need them, but also rolls with two incredibly fantastic perks. The Shock Safeguard at the bottom is kind of irrelevant, although it never hurts to have a little extra protection, but the first two perks really make up for it. Reactive buff gives you a chance of receiving a damage buff every time you are hit. And for those of you that didn't know, flying characters have a little extra aggro built in, so this perk is extra helpful on Iron Man. The damage buff is one of the best buffs in the game, so having it anywhere is extremely useful, but having it roll on this piece with these stats is just perfect. On top of that, the second perk, Courageous Inspiration, provides you with a health burst if you get hit too much, essentially improving the odds of the first perk too. Overall, just a great combo of perks on this piece. Sadly though, the date that I have doesn't seem to be working for me anymore, but hopefully it'll work for you. If not, the main perk that you want to find on this will be the reactive buff, so keep an eye out for that on world drops or in vendors. Lastly, let's look at slot 4, and you'll be happy to hear that I've gone for an easy piece this time with the Centurion's Mark 15 Quantum Reactor. This exotic stats are fixed to Precision, Valor, Might and Resolve, so you should be able to grab this pretty easily with a Precision and Valor or a Precision, Valor and Resolve roll. The perks are also fixed too, so no need to worry about RNG there. Perk number one, Electronic Shunt, is fine if you use parrying, personally I don't, but hopefully that will provide some benefit to you. But the second perk, Rampant Spike, is going to increase your critical attack damage whilst overcharged by a whopping 150%, which we hope to have activated 100% of the time with this build. Which amazingly, the third perk will really help us to do since it provides you with an additional arc overload charge, which as mentioned before, will overcharge you on activation. This piece basically allows you to keep your heroic and intrinsic meters full no matter who you're fighting with when you combine it with the first two main perks from slot 1 and slot 2. Even better news, this piece is relatively farmable. Just run the daily priority mission with Iron Man until you manage to land it with the right stats. For my first minor artifact, I use an ISO 8 of Cosmic Affinity. I use this mainly for the reactive Cosmic Surge, which means every time I take damage, I can self-heal and regenerate heroic energy. Try to roll this with precision, valor and proficiency if you can, and if you can, also grab the heroic assault perk that will really help you to get your Unibeam heroic back quicker, which is great. But don't panic if you can't, the Cosmic Surge is the priority here. Also, if you're looking to farm this, head to a Vault mission and you can grab them from DNA chests. I also use a 3 stat blue ISO 8 to boost my range damage with the high rolling precision, but basically use this slot to balance out stats where they're lacking in your build. These drop from pretty much any chest to drop zone or you can even buy them from vendors. 
Finally, now onto the major artifact, and whilst most people will suggest going for the Tactagon or the Norn Stone of Lethal Will, I've gone for the Ring of Nibelung, which increases the amount of heroic energy gained from heroic orbs and can also give you the ability to spawn your own orbs to help regen either your health, intrinsic, or your heroics. Either way, it's incredibly useful to have when your build depends on keeping your meters up, as it basically speeds up your heroic regen even more. Considering you can also make enemies drop orbs when they're defeated, then collect those orbs, you can basically instantly regen your heroics when overcharged. And there you go, that's it for gear. So, to summarize, in this build, we have an infinite heroic cycle, an infinite intrinsic cycle, a huge amount of battery damage, and even self-healing. But enough talking about it, let's show you how it all works in game. Also, if you're looking how to do the rocket spam that you may have seen in the showcase, or you're looking for more builds, check out these videos on the channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, stay safe, stay awesome, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.